Welcome to YouTube Excel Finance Trick number 10. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on the college website link and download the workbook Finance Tricks 1 to 17. Hey, we are going to start on nominal and effect and future value sheet tab, and we're going to talk about something terrible short term loans, money tree loaning. Now, here's the situation they will allow you to write a check that has a date 25 days in the future for 250 bucks and they'll give you $200 today and then they'll cash it in 25 days. Our goal here is to calculate the APR and effective annual rate. Two rates. We want to figure out what rate they are charging us when they do this short term loan. Here it is in the sales. 25 days. That's the length of the loan. The check amount that will be cashed in the future. That's the future value is 250 bucks. The loan we get today is $200. That'll be present value. Now, there's a couple steps to this. And the first step is calculate the 25-day rate. Now, here's the situation. Um, for 25 days, that's going to be the period for us. So we want to calculate the period rate. I'm going to click in this cell. One way to do this is equals the end amount divided by the begin amount minus 1. Control Enter. And, oh, 25, 0.25, 25%. You've got to be kidding. That's a terrible rate for the whole year. I Wait a second. That's not even the year. That's just for the period, 25 days. Now let's do uh, calculate the number, because we have a 25-day period, we need to figure out how many periods are in one year before we can calculate effective rate. So I'm going to click in this cell right here, equals 365 divided by our number of days for one period. That'll give us the number of periods in one year. 14.6, that's the number of compounding periods. Now, APR, that's relatively easy. We know our, we'll say equals, and we know our period rate times our number of compounding periods. That is how you calculate your APR, or nominal rate. Enter. Oh, no, that is terrible. 365%. You've got to be kidding me. I thought that was against the law. I guess not. That's not even the end of it. Here's the end of it, the effective rate. Because remember, this doesn't take in, this rate doesn't take into consideration the compounding effect of all those periods. So now, here we'll do the math formula that will calculate our effective rate. Equals, in parentheses, open parentheses, 1 plus our period rate, close parentheses, and shift 6 to get our caret. That's for exponents. And then click on 14.16. Finally, we have to subtract 1. That is the formula. And as it will turn out, this is a much more accurate formula than the built-in function. Control Enter. No way. With compounding, the effective annual rate is 2,499%. And that's not uncommon. This kind of structured short-term loan is not uncommon. Now, i got to show you the built-in function here. And I want to show you a problem with it. Equals effect, effect, nominal, and NPER. So the nominal is the APR. So I'm going to click, boop, right there, comma, and NPER. For us, it's 14.6. Close parentheses, Control, Enter. Now, when this happens to you, you want to make sure, oh, look, it's different. It's different than here. Now, when this happens, th this function right here is either wrong or the math is wrong. So you got to pick one. And I'm going to pick the math one. I'm going to click on that cell and hit F2. Now, I know that that formula is correct. So I'm going to bet that there's something not wrong with this math formula, but with the function. I'm going to click in the cell with the function and hit F2. Click right there. And then let's go up and look at our functions argument dialog box. I'm going to click on the Insert Function button. And um, when you have trouble or you can't figure out a uh, function, 
this little help link, help on this function, is amazing. We all know that it's hard to find help in Microsoft products, but not when it comes to function. And every single function there is has this little help on this, on this function. So I'm going to click here. You won't believe you could actually teach yourself all of the uh, functions just by coming here and reading all these. As, as I scroll down here, they have some notes, some remarks. There's even a little math formula right there. And there's usually um, some good examples. I'm going to scroll up here and read the remarks. And sure enough, the top one right here, NPERY, is truncated to an integer. So when I, and this actually happened to me. I was doing the function and the math, and I couldn't figure out. So I came up here, and sure enough, it told me right there what's happening. Let's close this. Click OK. What's happening is this 14.6 is an input into the function, and the function truncates it, which means it only takes the 14, not the 14.6. So in this case, it's more accurate to use the math. All right, we'll see you next Excel Finance trick.